G'day guys, today we'll be taking a look at Nintendo Entertainment System emulation on real Game Boy Advanced hardware. We're not going to be looking at the NES Classic series, instead we'll be looking at Pocket NES, which is a homebrew uh, NES emulator for the Game Boy Advanced. So we'll take a look at how well it runs, and also on how to create your own Game Boy Advanced ROMs full of NES uh, ROMs. Alright, let's get started. When you first power on the system, you're met with the list of ROMs. They do auto load as you hover over them. So as you can see as I'm scrolling through, they are instantly loading, which is pretty cool. There is sound as well. I'll actually turn the volume up. For the most part, emulation is pretty great. There are a few quirks um, and inaccuracies, but Again, you are emulating a complete NES system on a Game Boy Advance, so that's to be expected. We'll load up a game most people should know. So the first thing you'll see is the text is a little bit squished. That's because the original NES had a higher resolution than the Game Boy Advance screen. So you, in order to fit everything in, there's a few scaling options. I've picked um, sort of squash. So if you hold down L and R, Briefly, you are brought up to the emulation menu, go down to display, and I've gone uh, scaled BG and objects. You can change it to unscaled, which is not very good. Unscaled follow, which tries to follow um, where you are on the screen. It's hit and miss. It's pretty good, but it's not perfect. Uh, I do prefer scaled background and object though. On an emulator, flicker. Um, does flicker quite a lot on the real hardware, not so much, but you can see in the background as I'm toggling it, there is a bit of a difference. I prefer no flicker, and you can change the gamma, which is basically the brightness. So we'll try the actual emulation. So again, you can barely make out the word password, but if you're familiar with the game, it's fine. If it's an RPG you haven't played before and it's text heavy, you might want to go uh, a different option, a different scaling option. But if you've played it before, you should know where everything is. So again, you can sort of make out Airman, Quickman, but not really. Heatman sort of looks like Hellman. We'll load up a level. So I'll show you the different scaling uh, in gameplay. So this squashes the whole screen down. You do lose every so many lines, which is why it's uh, a bit squashed, like his health bar looks a bit funny. If we go down to display, change it to unscaled. So it does cut off the bottom of the screen permanently. You only see the top half, but you do have the um, every single line in the top half. We'll go to followed, or follow. So this does try and follow the um, character, so as I jump it scrolls up, and as I fall down it scrolls down. Similar to how uh, Super Mario Brothers on the Game Boy Color works. If you've ever played that game before, it can be a bit annoying if you're not used to it. I personally don't like it, but it might be an option if it is a text heavy game. Uh, scaled background full object. I believe, as the name implies, the background is squashed, but all objects um, aren't. Sprites obviously are squashed still. That's uh, because Mega Man's squashed. I'm not too sure. And scaled background and object. That's what I prefer, I prefer to play with. So to change game, you can tap L and R to bring up the menu. You can turn things like auto fire on and off. Uh, we'll go through the other settings as well. Frames per second, you can turn that on and off. Auto sleep, auto save and auto load. And the region, so PAL or NTSC. I'll just turn back uh, to this. So the top left, frames per second 60. And it's pretty consistent. I haven't noticed any issues. 
Uh, to change ROM, just go to exit at the bottom. So we'll try another one. We'll try Legend of Zelda. Again, you can see the text is a bit truncated or squashed. So if we go to display, go to unscaled or follow. And it does cut it off. So for RPGs, anything where there isn't a sprite, I believe, follow, it tries and tracks the sprite on screen. So Mega Man, that works fine. Uh, Mario should work fine as well, but for Zelda, uh, the start of it, uh, as you can see, it's not following anything. So you, you are losing text, but we'll just put that for now and we'll see in-game. So it works once you're in the game, but yeah, menus, it doesn't seem to follow. It does seem to have really great mapper support. I haven't found any games it won't run. If you've ever played uh, on an S NES emulator back in the day, sort of early uh, 2000s or late 90s, you'll know Wizards and Warriors 3 was a bit of a tricky mapper to emulate. And there was always a lot of graphical glitches. In the last 20 years or so, it's pretty much been perfected. But back in the day, this was one of the trickier ones. But as you can see, it works fine. We will just check if the beehive glitch still works. Whoops. And as you can see, the beehive despawned, so that still works even on the simulator. And we'll also check if you can damage boost still. And you can. Uh, again, this was a very tricky game to emulate back in the day, just because of the mapper. Um, but everything works fine now. So turning it off. Uh, as you can see, this is a real cart. I just flashed it using the Joey. Or if you don't have a Joey, you can use any cart flasher you want. And I'm just using an old Pokemon bootleg. So next, we'll load up our Windows 10 PC, and I'll go through how you can make your own. Alright, we're on our Windows 10 desktop, so to start off, you're going to want to download Pocket NES. I just went to Google, typed in Pocket NES, all one word, and the top result for me was Duedit's website, so click on that, and just click download. It is a uh, compressed zip, so no need to install, all you have to do is extract it, so let's get it downloads, and Pocket NES, I've already downloaded it, but you right click. Uh, and then extract. I'm using 7-zip, but you can just use the built-in one. Once you've extracted it, the next step is to put all of your NES ROMs inside the Pocket NES folder you just extracted. Put them straight into the um, folder. Don't put them into its own subfolder. So don't make a folder called NES or anything. Just straight in. And then we're going to run PNESMMW. It'll auto-find all of your ROMs in the folder. At the bottom, you have two uh, checkboxes. Or radio buttons you've got info and you've got menu info uh, shows you the actual rom it's found and menu gives you the short file name which is a lot cleaner this is what it'll look like on the actual menu you don't have to select that on the top right you can change what it will look like so if you wanted to rename battle toads uh, fighting frogs you could for some reason um, and there's also the separate hacks you can do for each one but we'll leave it all as default and we just have to press make rom and it was basically instant, so okay, close that off. The file it creates is called pocketnessmenu.gba. Uh, it's not the pocketness.gba, that is just the uh, base file it builds from. So make sure you are flashing or running pocketnessmenu. We'll try an emulator just to make sure it works. And it does. So now we know it works, the next step is to flash it to a cart. 
to flash it, you will need a physical uh, flash cart. I'm just using the po Pokemon Unbound bootleg and a cart rider. And I'm just using the Joey Jr. from Ben Ven again. So pop the cart in, plug in the USB cable. If you're using a different cart flasher, follow the instructions you were given. But if you are using the Joey Jr. with Joey Gooey, you can follow along. So I'm just using the latest version of Joey Gooey, which is uh, 012. It auto found the flash cart, so let's go upload ROM. Go to our pocket nest menu.gba. Again, make sure it's the one that has menu and not just pocket nest. And that's flashing. I'll come back once it's finished flashing. So it's just about finished. And it's done. It refreshes it by itself. Uh, you can leave it open, but we're done with it, so I'll close it off. And we will put it into my SP. And we'll see if it works. And there we go. So we'll try another game. We'll try uh, Simpson. We'll try Mario 3. And that works fine. And I've died. So if you have any questions or any tips or anything like that, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, thanks for watching.